Hey you folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to a long overdue post-mortem for 99 Luftwaffel, my most recent entry into the Ludum Dare game programming competition, or Game Jam. Ludum Dare, or Ludum Dare, if you don't know, is a game programming competition where you have 48 hours to make a game absolutely from scratch and all by yourself. They also have a 72-hour jam version where you can work with other people and use some existing assets and stuff, but I, I, I don't know, I don't personally participate in that one. I like the 48-hour strict competition. It's a lot of fun. Uh, a post Mortem is a game where, is, is a sorry, not a game, is sort of a write-up of uh, what happened during development and, you know, what the good things and the bad things about the game are. 99 Luftwaffels um, has a sort of an infamous reputation for me as the only game of all the games I've ever made in London Air where I was truly and absolutely disappointed. I'm not happy with it. And it's not to say that it's bad, it's not to say there wasn't some interesting stuff in it, but I'm not personally satisfied with it. Now, partially... That was kind of intentional, because I have this thing where I do where I kind of fall in love with every single game I make in Let em Dare. I'm like, oh, I've got to continue working on this forever and making it into a, a full developed, you know, AAA title kind of thing. Um, and the most recent game before that, before 99 Luftwaffels, so 99 Luftwaffels was for Let em Dare 30. Before that was Drill 18, the Mars Project. That was for Let em Dare 29. And that is absolutely by far my favorite game I've ever made for this competition. And in fact, it ranked quite highly. Out of about 2,500 entries, it came in sixth place overall. It was very highly regarded, and going back and replaying it for uh, this little video here, I'm like, wow, this is a really, really fun game. And I actually have continued to work on it. I actually rewrote the whole thing from scratch using a much faster and more flexible kind of engine setup, and uh, I'm still hoping to develop it as as we go forward. And so I intentionally wanted to make 99 Luftwaffles not something that I would want to continue you. However, I didn't want it to come out to something that I kind of look back on and I just hate. I can like point at all these things and like this is terrible and that is terrible and so on and so forth. Interestingly enough, just again to sidetrack a little bit more before we go into the actual postmortem, Lighter, which was the game I made for Let Em Dare 28. After finishing Lighter, I was horribly, horribly depressed. I was incredibly disappointed with myself because at the time I still had a day job. And so I had a day job and the YouTube thing, which meant the only time I ever had the opportunity or the time to do game programming was for Let Em Dare. And Lighter was a first person dungeon exploration kind of game. And after I was done, I was so disappointed that I didn't make my kind of game. I didn't make a strategy type of game. Um, and I was, I was really, really bummed. It was it was weird how upset I became, um, and especially now because I've gone and replayed lighter, and I actually think it's it's pretty good. I mean, there's you know there's there's some simplistic bits and this and that, but I, really it was kind of ambitious. The amount of content that's in there quite a bit. I can certainly point out a few flaws here and there. Um, in particular, the chess puzzle really needed some more hints about how to solve it, for example. But um, Overall, I've gone and replayed it, and I think it was a pretty smashing entry. And I still think Drill 18 is a really, really, really good entry. And then 99 Luftwaffles, not so much. So 99 Luftwaffles is, was my ninth entry ever. Uh, so this weekend, I'm about to go into my tenth Ludum Dare, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. And so Luftwaffles, 99 Luftwaffles, the theme was Connected Worlds. And to me, I really wanted to make a game that played on the idea of trade, because to me, trade is what connects nations and villages and, and, you know, potentially worlds. So I set up this little map where you had maybe this world that was shattered by some sort of cataclysm. So everything was divided into these little chunks of land. And so your job was to set up flying zeppelins that would um, reconnect sort of the world by combining the trade. There was one part of the world that was more sort of about mining and another one that was more about agriculture and another one that was had all the industry. So you had to ferry goods back and forth over these zeppelins to, to produce sort of finished goods and then bring them to towns and grow the towns. The bigger and more prosperous the towns became, the more tax money you got, which allowed you to buy more zeppelins and upgrade both the zeppelins and the factories and all that kind of thing. And um, I did just replay the game for the uh, for this video, so I'd have some background footage and so I'd remember things. And honestly, it's not that bad. The problem was the absolute lack of clarity and just a really miserable user interface. Um, it didn't help, of course, that um, the Unity um, interface system wasn't out yet. I, I don't know what version of Unity it was programmed in. 
uh, but uh, it didn't have the proper interface system that is now available. I think I did uh, use the NGUI system, but I was still new to it. So the, the system ultimately looks pretty bad. And it's also not really clear about how things are supposed to work, how you're supposed to ship goods around, that sort of thing. It's got a, an economic system that's not unlike Railroad Tycoon 3, which to me is the greatest economic system in any game ever. But I don't think that it was executed really, really, really well. Once you sort of figure everything out and you create all your connections, then it becomes sort of a fun sort of, I don't know, cookie clicker-esque kind of upgrade system where, you know, you, you upgrade things so you can make more money, so you can upgrade more things, so you can make more money until you ultimately win by having a million people in your little society. And considering you start by, with about 8,000 people, um, that's a pretty good a thing. I also like the fact that the Zeppelins are all named after Twitch.tv subscribers, which uh, I always try to include that sort of stuff because to me, the real reason I participate in Ludum Dare is because I really enjoy live streaming the whole thing. I think it's a great experience. The, uh, the viewers keep me really motivated and also it's a great opportunity to sort of showcase the development cycle. Um, so there we go. I mean, it's still ranked. It's still broken to the top 100, um, which, you know, I think some of it may have had to do with the fact that there were a lot of animations going on. There were a lot of little details that a lot of people don't put into the game. And also, I'm sure that it was helped by the fact that um, quite a few of my fans also participate in Let Em Dare. So there was probably a little bit more of generous voting. And I'm not going to say the game was um, was a disaster. I think it was just like it needed an extra four hours of polish to improve the user interface and also put a lot more instructions into the game and just feedback so that people maybe had a little bit better of an idea of what it was doing. Um, you know, it was a very ambitious title. There was a lot of different buildings, a lot of little animations, and, you know, it was probably a little bit, well, there's no probably and there's no a little bit. It was definitely over-engineered for what the time allowed. Um, but there we have it. So it was done in 3D using a blender. Um, I did a lot of animations in Blender and then a few extra animations in Unity where it made sense. Uh, like, for example, a lot of the propellers, I don't think were animated in Blender. I think they were animated in Unity with maybe a little bit of a script and a little bit of particle effects for the smoke and things. There was a lot of little jaunty things going on and about. Um, you know, but I think the map could have used more work to make it look a little less like it was just floating in space. That being said, a lot of, lot of Dare games end up looking a lot like this because just the, the, the limitations of time don't really allow you to do a whole lot else. I love the giant cows in the metal the the mega cattle ranch and a lot of it was about having in jokes for my viewers you know calling things new brussels and having the waffle house and uh, those sorts of things and having you know the the fancy hats as an important luxury resource that sort of thing it was very i i don't know it was very sort of in jokey with the viewers the all callbacks to different stuff and just sort of being silly and funny about different things um but uh, I, I still don't like the fact that we didn't really have any sound design. We sort of threw together a song right at the very end, some sort of background tune that was in there, but it's pretty short and repetitive, and I don't know if it actually added anything at all to the game, but I always like to add at least some sound there. So um, it was interesting to do this sort of economic game, and I would certainly like to develop more strategy games of, of this game well, not necessarily this nature, but strategy, economy, buildery kind of games for Let Em Dares of the Future, because of course that's the sort of game I like, and also the kind of games that my viewers like. But I have to admit that they are a lot of work, because um, A, just creating an economic system or a builder system of any kind can be tricky. Getting it to be balanced mostly requires a lot of replaying, and that's one of the things I find in Let Em Dare I don't get the opportunity to do, is play my game over and over and over again to really fine-tune things, which is always kind of disappointing. A lot of times I don't do a, a full and complete, true, proper playthrough until an hour before submission. Because one of my rules is if the competition ends at 9 p.m. Eastern, and I strictly say I will finish at 8. At 8, I'm done. Because then it always, you know, gives me an opportunity to, it, it, just in case there's a, there's an issue with uploading things, for example, then I've got a window of time there. But also, I say, eight, I'm done. And then I actually do sit down and play the game for the first time. If, and, and well, maybe not the first time, but I do a proper playthrough at that point. And then if you see a really disastrous crash bug, you still have an opportunity to fix it. Um... But I really have to find a way to make it so that I don't have to spend like the first 44 hours of the thing building all of the, the sort of components to make this game before it can actually work. And that's one of the issues. Like if you do something like, a, say, a platformer, you can get, you know, you can work a couple hours and get your person that jumps up and down. And you can work another couple of hours to get a platform that moves back and forth. And another couple of hours for an enemy that moves around. You can keep sort of testing those things. But it, with a big complicated strategy game, there's a limitation to 
how much individual little parts can really work until the whole has clicked in. Um, you know, until I've got the Zeppelins going around picking up goods and dropping things off and, and affecting demand and this and that and growing cities, you can't really see how everything is going to fit together. Um, and, you know, that's definitely a shortfall. So it, it's a challenge. I think, um, you know, I, at this point, I'm not mad with myself for having picked such an ambitious title or sort of game to make. But um, knowing what I didn't know now, I could probably make a very similar sort of game much, much faster by making slightly different decisions. But I think the real shortfall is the user interface, because I think strategy simulation, buildery kind of games really revolve around their UI, because you have to be able to communicate to the player what they need to know, what the demands are, what the excesses are and how to resolve them so the player can take action um, otherwise like in this one yeah sort of there's a help and it sort of gave you a bit of instruction and yeah you can click on the various buildings and start to get a sense about what they might need and what they might be supplying but it, it, it takes a little bit of work and even with me replaying this game after you know uh, four months since participating it took me a good 10 minutes to like remember how to play the game again, which is not a good thing. Um, especially since in Let Him Dare, I always game for, aim for a game that can be played in about five, ten, yeah, five minutes, ideally, maybe 10 minutes at the outside, because a lot of the judges don't spend a lot of time playing a game. Also, by focusing on such a short game, you tend to have a lot more of a focused and direct um, experience for the user. There's not a lot of buildup. They just jump in and they're getting like fun times right away, which is, I think is important for this competition, but it also um, allows you to really streamline your, your game design, which is important. You can't have a big epic story that takes 30 minutes or more to unfold, and that would be a waste of time. And here it takes, takes you know, probably well over 10 minutes uh, to play a game, especially if you haven't played this one before. So that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's it. So I'm not terribly happy with it in a lot of ways, but, you know, there was a lot of lessons learned, and it certainly accomplished the feat of not resulting in a game that I'm personally in love with. Um, <laughs> so there we have it. Uh, it is the game that has the most sort of 3D models and animations and textures than I've ever done in a game before, so it gave me an opportunity to play around that. We certainly learned a few things. And using the, the Unity Train Engine and some trees and things to, you know, make some landscapes, that was a new thing for me as well. And I'm happy that I've done this because I've wanted to do this kind of economic game before. But I think for the next Let Em Dare, and I say this every time, next Let Em Dare, I'm going to do a game that is much, much simpler, which never works out. But, you know, maybe this time, maybe this time. Thanks for watching, folks. And I hope you'll come and uh, watch me this Let Em Dare from December 5th to December 7th, starting at 9 p.m., uh, on the Friday, December 5th, Eastern Time, is when the actual programming will do, and we'll see what kind of game we might make. See you there. Bye-bye.